Today, we're coming to you from the banks of the mighty Missouri River in South Dakota. Welcome to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Conservation Connect, where we learn about conservation careers, species, and the kinds of technology we use to study and help wildlife. I'm your host, Louis Ocaranza. Today, we're coming to you from the Missouri River, also known as the Big Muddy, to meet a real-life dinosaur, a prehistoric fish that's alive and well, swimming in the waters behind me. Meet the paddlefish, so primitive it doesn't even have bones, yet it can grow more than 100 pounds. Today, we'll meet the fisheries workers that are keeping a watchful eye on this titan of our big rivers. Here with me is fisheries biologist Sam Stuckel with the Gavin's Point National Fish Hatchery. Sam, these are some pretty unusual fish. How did you get into this line of work? I've been fascinated with fish and fishing since I was pretty much a toddler and I uh, grew up on the Missouri River and just knew that someday I wanted to try to find a way to work with fish and was lucky enough to stumble into this job. Tell me, how is the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service involved with the paddlefish program? One big role the service has is in paddlefish propagation, raising and releasing paddlefish back into the Missouri River to keep the population strong and growing. Sam, can you tell me a little bit about the aquarium that we have on site here? Part of our public outreach program at Gavin's features a free public aquarium that has about 13,000 gallons of water, many different native species to the Missouri River ecosystem, and we get a lot of visitors through there. Next, we arrive at the spawning building at Gavin's Point National Fish Hatchery, where a friend of ours was waiting. So joining us today, we have Leona, our youth host. And I, Leona, I know you're excited to ask questions. Um, so what are some cool facts about paddlefish that people might not know? Paddlefish are a fascinating animal. They are a filter feeder, kind of like the whales you might see on the Discovery Channel. They eat plankton, tiny little organisms in the water. Where they just strain the water, taking these tiny little things out, and they get huge eating such a tiny diet, up to a couple hundred pounds. Then I have to ask, what is their big nose for? That is part of their feeding system. They like to live in muddy water. They need a way to find plankton, and that long snout or rostrum is kind of like a plankton detector. It, it can feel out electrical fields around these plankton and lead that paddlefish right into it. Sam, for people watching this, where can people find paddlefish in the United States? And also, um, what type of habitat do they prefer? They're a, they are found in the central part of the United States in big rivers like the Missouri, the Mississippi, those types of things. They like muddy water. They like the still water within the rivers, but they need that flowing component. They're not specifically a lake fish, so that's where you would find a paddlefish. Sam, can you tell me some of the technologies and equipment you're using to study these paddlefish? Yeah, one simple thing we use, every single fish we stock is tagged or marked with a tiny little piece of metal that's injected into that long paddle nose, the rostrum. And that little piece of metal has some notches, kind of a code on it. When that fish is caught by an angler, we can recover that little tag and it will tell us how old that fish is, where it came from, where it was originally stocked. And if you recover enough of those, you get an idea how this fish moves around in the wild. Cool, and we'll, we'll be able to see some fish today? We will definitely catch some fish today. We should head out to the river now before the rain comes. And, this is just uh, this way? Take a look. Thank you. Sam, where are we going today? We're here in the Gavin's Point Tail Race in the Missouri River, right below Gavin's Point Dam with the fisheries management crew from South Dakota Game Fish and Parks. We're in a, one of the best places in the world to catch paddlefish, and we're gonna put a net down here and see what we can get. As you can see right here in the structure, this is a great place to catch paddlefish. They like to move upstream, and when they do, they run into this dam. So they kind of congregate here in the slower water. We're gonna set this large uh, floating gill net here that will fish near the surface and hopefully catch us a paddlefish. And so how long is this net here? This is a hundred foot net. Just kind of feed out the floats. And... <laughs> I 
All right. Okay, go ahead. Looks like we have one here. The float's really bobbing. We're gonna grab right by this float and lift it slowly, see if the fish is still there. There's like so many here. Just keep going, get them all in and get that net out of the water. That's the American paddlefish right there. Large mouth, no teeth, filter feeder. The so, big old roster. So Sam, how do I use this thing here? Okay, you're gonna slide that switch on. Okay. You can see the red light. This yep. is just a metal detector, uh, similar to what they use at the airport. You're gonna move that back and forth across the tip of the rostrum or the snout and see if we get a beep. Right up there at the tip. Now we're not getting anything, try below. That would tell you that there's no little metal tag in the snout of this, and it's probably a fish that was born in the wild. Oh, wow. Sam, what are all these little dots on the paddlefish for? Well, we talked about how the, the rostrum has some sensors, little electrical sensors to find plankton. They actually spread all the way back into this flap and across the head. They have a big mouth that they open up to get the plankton, and that flap uh, probably helps with the filtering. Let's go ahead and take this one back to the hatchery. This might be a female with some eggs. Put her in the holding tank. There you go. Back at the hatchery, we prepared to spawn the fish, which started with collecting eggs. Yes. Mix that sperm with the eggs. Okay. And fertilization should happen really rapidly. And then I just mix it with this guy here? Yeah, we're gonna use a turkey feather because they're nice and soft. And we're gonna actually do that for 20 minutes. Oh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes of stirring. So this is a hatching jar, and these eggs will spend the next week in here, and uh, bubbling and percolating and staying in constant motion. And this is where they'll hatch, and the young the fry, the newly hatched fish, will swim up once they hatch, and they'll actually get sucked right out of this little gray pipe into a long tube that will lead them to a holding tank. Once the fry mature, the juvenile paddlefish will be stocked back into the Missouri River. That was a lot of fun seeing what they do on the rivers and in the hatchery. If you learned something today, please spread the word to your friends and family about the paddlefish. We have paddlefish in the rivers of many states. These tremendous big river fish depend on clean water, making sure you and your family dispose of chemicals like paints and cleaning products in the proper way will help keep the paddlefish swimming for years to come. Thanks, Leona, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Conservation Connect.